Okay, so we're going to do a couple of uh, videos on animation in 3ds Max, and this is going to assume that you guys know absolutely nothing about 3ds Max. Uh, I know a few of you, BW do, um, but let's let's kind of start from the very beginning. And I'm not going to go through and explain the entire interface because holy crap, the interface in this program is enormous and unfolds onto itself and gets ridiculous. So I'm just going to be introducing the points of the interface as we go along. So in 3ds Max. This is my basic window into the 3D world, similar to Revit, AutoCAD, and everything else. Um, I've got a zoom in and out with the wheel. I can hold the wheel on my mouse and get pan. I can hold um, alt and orbit, which is going to be different. You're going to have to remember it's alt, not shift, to do the orbit. And again, it's going to orbit about what is selected and it's also going to zoom relative to where your mouse or your cursor is located so basically remember those kind of things okay let's throw in some quick characters um, so uh, right over here these are my different tool sets that I can start working in um, I've got create modify hierarchy motion display and the monkey wrench okay um, so let's right now we're creating something I've got some basic objects right here that are under standard primitives. I can expand that by either selecting a few things here, or I can also do this drop down and have extended primitives, um, or not extended primitives, but an extended set of objects, including um, primitives that aren't really primitive at all. Uh, and then also, a particular note is AEC extended, things like foliage. If you need a tree, you know, it can do that, um, which is kind of nice. And while I'm there, just because architecture, um, if I look at modifying the foliage, I've kind of got an infinite number of these trees that I can work with by generating, clicking this new seed. And so I've got random variables on that. So a lot of different tree types. None of them, in my opinion, are particularly great or photorealistic. You've got to work with them a bit to get them to look like what you want to. But it's kind of nice to know they're there. Okay, so that was my first um, diverging talk uh, along the path of animation. So let's get back into making some boxes. So I'm going to left-click and drag out a base of a box. And let's just do a couple of them so we can have a few things moving around. Okay, so you guys know 3D really well. I do know that. Um, but a lot of you haven't worked with motion very much in 3D. So let's, let's cover some basics on this. Um, we know that each object is defined by a set of Cartesian coordinates um, on the X, Y, Z, and axis. So I've got X, Y, and Z. I've got one more variable in 3ds Max that don't exist in a lot of other programs, and that is this variable right down here at the bottom, time. So this element that I'm moving back and forth is called the shuttle, and the ticks unfortunately do not relate to seconds or anything that you guys are particularly familiar with. They are going to relate to frames, in this case frames per second. Um, the industry standard still, although I'm going to guess that this is going to change eventually, is 30 frames per one second. So if I have 100 frames as my base time at the bottom, that is three and one third of a second. Okay, so kind of lock that in your head. So I've got an object. It is defined by its location on the Cartesian coordinate system. And I can even see that. That is this object's axis right here. It is defined as one is defined as being in that location. If I activate time, I can then move it to a new location and the computer will resolve for me its motion from this location to a new location over this much time. Cool, so let's look at activating that or turning that on as a variable. So um, to do that, I've got two options. I've got auto key and set key. Auto key is going to manually update any action that I take. Set key is going to require you to continue to hit the keyframe button. And the keyframe is essentially going to, to remember your object's location at a point in time. It is going to require you to manually hit this keyframe button each time you make a motion. I would suggest while you are learning animation to work with auto key. 
it's going to do a little bit better job of remembering exactly what you have going on. Okay, so I'm going to activate auto key and my entire screen is going to go a little bit red. Take that as a warning sign because the activities that I do are now going to get recorded based on a new location on my timeline. So if I want to move this box from this point to this point, what I need to do is first thing I typically like to do, and you don't necessarily have to do this, good practice, I'm going to hit the set key and you're going to see it's given me a keyframe right here. It's given me a new little icon. I'll move the shuttle just off of it. It's given me an indicator that this object has a keyframe at zero. I've locked in its home position. So I, over the course of, let's say, two seconds or 60 frames, I'm going to move that box across the XY axis to this location. Okay? So... Let's watch the motion now. I can scrub the shuttle back, and I get that motion across that much time. After 60, it's no longer moving. Okay, let's also put this on 60. I do want you guys to notice, if I move it like this, it is not going to do any of that. It is going to take the simplest, easiest path between my point zero here and my 60 here. It is not resolving sort of per second as I move the object around. It is looking at the base point, the Cartesian coordinates for that object over time and resolving a path. So if I wanted to actually hook this around that column, I would need to add in another keyframe. So let's slide that over just a little bit. I'm going to move my shuttle to 30. And I'm going to set up a new location right over here. And now my cube is going to go from its first point, second point, to third point. And if you notice, it's going to do that along a relatively smooth arc. As you get more advanced, you can kind of come in and begin to adjust. Well, not kind of. You can come in and adjust specifically how you want that curve to be handled. You can handle how quickly the motion starts. But what 3ds Max is going to do as a default is it's going to assume you would like smooth starts, smooth stops, smooth transitions. And for the most part, this is the best way to work. Okay, so let's look at a few additional variables. Let's say that I would like a half spin by 30. So we were using move. I can use rotate. And again, rotate, I've got a series of axes that I can rotate my object by. So let's do a half rotation. So now I have a keyframe for rotate. So you can see now the box is going to rotate from point A to point B, or I should say from keyframe 0 to keyframe 30, and then it's going to maintain that rotation, not as a constant, but it's going to maintain its heading, I should say, from 30 to 60, because I do not have a rotation at 60. Okay, so let's add a rotation keyframe at 60. I'm going to tip it sideways approximately 90 degrees, or let's see if I can do exactly 90 degrees, that would be fun. Oof, close, close enough. Okay, so now I've got it tipping sideways and rotating. Cool, so that's the basics of moving things around inside of 3ds Max. Once I'm happy with my results, I'm going to turn off Auto Key, and I go back to my traditional workspace. And any modifications I make to my object, like let's say I move this here, it is going to update the entire animation based on the relative location of this new starting point. So if I scrub through, it's not going to go back to those original points in the Cartesian coordinate system. It has moved that entire animation with my object. Okay, So this animation is stored not in its global position, but in its local position based off of this object. Okay, if I select a different object, notice the keyframes are now gone. This column, this big box, no keyframes, no keyframes. I select this guy again, my keyframes show back up. If I want to edit these keyframes, I'm going to turn auto key back on, and I can move to either the keyframe location, and I can do that by jogging, um, with this control panel right here, so I can go previous frame, or I can toggle keyframe mode, 
and this will take me exactly to each keyframe along my timeline. This guy right here being known as the timeline. Okay, and that's this button right here, toggle keyframe mode. Okay, so if I have that, any change that I make to this location, to that keyframe with auto key on, it's now going to update and change that keyframe. And if you notice also, let's do one more quick thing with this. I'm going to move that much closer to my starting point. Watch what it does to the speed. Slower speed because I'm traveling less of a distance. Greater speed because I'm traveling a further distance. Okay, so again, the computer is going to simply resolve all of those things for you. Last point to note, I can also left lasso and select my keyframes and I can drag those keyframes to a new location along the timeline as well. So now I have a little bit faster motion, and my motion is a little bit more consistent because I'm giving the box more time to execute the maneuver from keyframe to keyframe. So exporting this guy um, will be as simple as creating an FBX file, and that FBX file is going to give you both the motion path, the object's geometry, and the object's texture map. And now I shall try to ungracefully close down my screencasting software. There we go.